We'll give everyone a moment to gather. We should glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom is our salvation, life, and resurrection, through whom we are saved and delivered. You'd like to join us in singing Lift High the Cross. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred name. Come, Christians, follow where our captain Through my fault, through my most grievous fault, 
Therefore I ask Blessed Mary of her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. shall share in the land, in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The land must be a year old male without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the fourth day, fourteenth day of this month, and then with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the, door, to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the land. 
That same night they shall eat its roast, roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate, with pil pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Our blessing cup is our communion with the blood of Christ. Our blessing cup is our communion with the blood of Christ. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Our blessing cup is our communion with the blood of Christ. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosened my bonds. Our blessing cup is our communion with the blood of Christ. To you will I offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. Our blessing cup is our communion with the blood of Christ. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. One love one another as I have loved you. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. 
He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over, so you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him, for this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at the table, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I, I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Week, this Mass of the, that begins this Triduum liturgy, this Triduum celebration, it's so different. It's one of the most unique liturgies of the year, culminating in the, in the most unique liturgy of the year, which is the Easter Vigil. In all of this, brothers and sisters, God is calling us out of the norm. He's shaking us out of what we're used to. And yes, you might be laughing. We are as out of what we are used to as possible right now, for we are not even all here. It seems so very weird to look out upon this church and see only this handful and to not see your faces. It's one of great sorrow. But I think that this is doing what God is asking for us to do. We get so set in our ways. We get so set in how we live. And sometimes it takes the grandest of things, literally almost the whole world shutting down, to wake us up to the reality of who God is in our life. How many people have tried to say this plague, this pandemic, this coronavirus is God doing something to the world, punishing the world, or bringing some kind of punishment upon some person or another, or country or another? This is not what God does. We bring about the brokenness in our world. But what I will tell you is that even in the most broken and sinful moments, even in the worst experiences of our lives and our world, God is ever-present. 
and God will use it for the greatest good that he can if we open our hearts to allow him. So even though there is so much death and destruction, there's so much struggle in this world currently, there always is. But God is ever-present. And in all of this, God shows us his very self. God tells us of his love for us. And so, brothers and sisters, tonight, we are shaken out of our norm. Tonight, nothing is the same. Tonight, we come to this Lord's Supper in a way that we are not used to. But it is still the same. It never changes. And in fact, I thought it was something so beautiful in that opening prayer that this is a new sacrifice that is ever eternal. This great gift of Christ's sacrifice, it always remains. It never changes. And so in this moment of everything being upended, even though we are not here, even though this may not be the way we desire it to be, brothers and sisters, in this moment, this is the same. This is the same as it always was and always will be. From that moment that Jesus spoke these words on the night of the Last Supper, on that moment where he instituted the new Passover, which is why we read this account of the Exodus story of the Passover meal, Brothers and sisters, this is the new Passover that Jesus has instituted, but we must remind ourselves of where this came from, of what laid the foundation for that new Passover meal. And so we look to the old Passover, and what must be offered? A year-old male lamb without blemish. And it will be offered, and its blood will be applied to the doorposts and the lintel of every house, and they will eat its flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. When we look at the account of the Last Supper, there is no lamb that is mentioned. But it is a Passover meal. And that is because Jesus is the lamb. This is why over and over in the scriptures it says he is the firstborn. tells us of his innocence. It tells us that even at the moment of his crucifixion, they did not break his legs because it is without blemish. Because he offers that sacrifice not only at the Last Supper, but he offers that sacrifice then and fully completes that sacrifice on the cross. He begins this one action that takes place from Last Supper to the crucifixion. Because here, where the priest offers this lamb to be sacrificed, where the priest, the priestly father of the household is the one that celebrates the Passover. And every, every time the Passover is celebrated, it is not a new Passover, but a moment where they represent the Passover again. Where they are taken back to that first Passover meal. They do not celebrate multiple Passovers. They participate in the one Passover meal. And this is what they then call the memorial meal. And brothers and sisters, this is our faith. This is the Mass. We do not re-sacrifice Christ every time we come here. We represent. We make Christ present to his people once again. We are taken back to that moment of the Last Supper. We are taken back to the moment of the crucifixion. Where Jesus, the high priest, offers that sacrifice. Jesus, in this great gift, fulfills the Passover. Completes the Passover meal. Jesus, in this moment, he then takes us back every time we come to the Mass. We are taken back to that very moment of the Last Supper. We are taken back to that moment of the crucifixion. And we stand there at the foot of the cross with John and Mary and the other women. We are gathered around him as at the Last Supper. And we hear those words, this is my body. 
This is my blood. And this is the blood that washes us clean. This is the blood on the doorpost and the lintel of our heart. When you look at a doorpost and a lintel, it's a very square thing. And when you spread the blood on the doorpost and then on the lintel, it makes the sign of the cross. That even in that first Passover, long before the cross was a reality, this prefigurement was being pointed to. This fulfillment was being pointed to. This, this moment prefigured that sacrifice of Christ on the cross, which then marks us out, which then washes us clean, and which then marks out the doorposts of our very heart and our self and our life. So that Christ may enter, that we might follow where he goes that we might follow through that doorpost to salvation. And brothers and sisters, that door to salvation is the cross. And so when we hear this recounting by Paul of take this, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. That remembrance is that memorial sacrifice. When you hear this, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. This cup is the new, cup, or new covenant in my blood. This meal establishes that lifelong, that eternal relationship with God. That covenantal relationship, which is an exchange of persons and selves. We give ourselves so completely to the Lord and brothers and sisters because Christ is the one that makes this bread and wine, his very body and blood. Then as we give ourselves and present ourselves in communion, which we now long for all the more. And he gives us his entire self so that we might take him into ourselves and then follow where he leads to salvation. Tonight, he institutes the gift of the priesthood. Tonight is that celebration of the priestly ministry, of the ordained priesthood, where he speaks to those apostles and he gives them that authority to offer this sacrifice where he makes them priests. Because he doesn't say, write this. He says, do this. And the apostles did. For the rest of their lives, they did this in memory, in memory of Jesus. And every action that they did was a moment where they were taken back to that last supper. Where even though they had abandoned him, they then stand at the foot of the cross. That when we abandon Christ in our sins, because of the gift of his mercy, because of the gift of his confession, because of the gift of his Eucharist, we are taken to the foot of the cross every time we come to this Mass. Tonight, one of the most unique aspects is the washing of the feet. It is also one of the hardest to not do decided it would seem to be more scandalous to people to wash feet in the midst of this pandemic. So we do without. But we pause in this moment to see what this action was about. They're talking about the Passover, and part of the Passover meal was that they needed to wash themselves ritually. And Jesus does this as he washes their feet. They had already prepared themselves, but in this moment, he's showing them what his priesthood is about. It's about service. It's not about grandeur. It's not about power. It does have authority, but it is not about the authority. In fact, the authority is called to service. The service of God first, the service of his church, the service of you. And so tonight, even though not all of us are clean, even though not everyone here even is watching this as Catholic, know that Christ calls you to himself here. He longs for that moment where you are once again in this church gathered together. And until that moment, you're gathered virtually, you're gathered spiritually because of the gift of the Eucharist. I always remind people that in that gift of the Mass, 
We are united in that Eucharist wherever we are. And so we see you in the gift of the Eucharist. Because you are his body, and when I hold up that post and I see his body, I see you. And so tonight he institutes that gift of the Eucharist, which is ever integrally connected to the gift of the priesthood. So may we see that unique moment where Christ pours himself out in service, but where Christ pours himself out in sacrifice. And ever, ever knew this eternal sacrifice. We long for it all the more as everything is different right now. So let him use this moment and this time of difference, this moment of being away, to wash you. To wash you of those things that keep you from him. To wash you of those things of this world. To wash you clean of those things that you put before him, which all are conquered right now. That just in that exodus, God conquered all of the gods of the Egyptian Today, in this new exodus, today, in this new moment where we are being free from the things of this world, don't go back to putting them before the Lord. Put him first, as he is ever ancient, ever new, ever eternal. We now turn our hearts and our lives to the Lord to hear and to answer our prayers. For Pope Francis and Bishop Thomas John Paprocki, that they continue to guide us in, in the example of leadership and service, that they show us what the true priesthood is about, serving God and his people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all the sick and suffering, for all those who have known to pray for them, for those dealing with homelessness, addiction, depression, anxiety, or imprisonment, that they feel the hope that Christ can bring. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for priests throughout the world, that they might be ever more faithful to the Lord in their service and in their prayer, that they might devote themselves to the great gift of the liturgy of the hours, the great gift of the mass, the great gift of the sacraments and service of the people, that they keep their hearts and their minds focused on service of God and his church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the priests who are sick, the priests who, have, who are uh, dealing with the coronavirus themselves, and priests who are sick everywhere in the world from whatever they deal with, that they might be healed of their infirmities and brought ever closer to Christ in their suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died and for all those who will die this day, that they may see our God face to face. And remember especially all those priests who have died in the coronavirus, in service of God's people, in bringing the sacraments to those who are sick, in the, in, their, in the very danger of their own lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we ask you to hear and answer these prayers which we offer you, and those in the silence of the hearts for all who are watching, as we gather united by this gift of the Eucharist, draw us ever closer to your love and your heart. We ask this through Christ, our High Priest and Lord. Amen. Amen. As we prepare the gifts, we sing number 717 in the green hymnal. 717, Christians, let us love one another. Christians, let us love one another as we share the true living bread. Jesus, 
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of the sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Look at the green book. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as of his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong 
and as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, that without end we are claimed. Oh, holy, holy. together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas John, our Bishop, and all those who holy to the truth, and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer the sacrifice of praise where they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command, command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, for our salvation and the salvation of all that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim 
celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Right.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. This is the body that will be given up for you. This is the chalice of the new covenant in my blood, says the Lord. Do this whenever you receive it in memory of me. Repeat after me the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, my Jesus, I believe that you, I believe that you are present, are present in the blessed sacrament, in the blessed sacrament. I love you, I love you above all things, above all things, and I desire you, and I desire you in my soul, in my soul. Since I cannot, since I cannot now receive you, now receive you sacramentally, sacramentally come at least, come at least spiritually into my heart, spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there, as though you were already there. I embrace you, I embrace you, and unite myself, and unite myself wholly to you, wholly to you. Permit not, permit not that I should ever be separated from you that I should be ever separated from you. Amen. Amen. Lord, at thy first Eucharistic pray that all thy church for, might be forever one. Grant us at every Eucharist to say with longing heart and soul thy will be done. Oh, may we all one bread, one body be through this blessed sacrament of unity. For all thy church, O Lord, we intercede. Make you make thou our sad divisions soon to cease. Draw us the nearer each to each we plead by drawing all to thee, O Prince of Peace. Thus may we all one bread, one body be. Through this blessed sacrament of unity, we pray thee to pour wonders from thy fold. Oh, bring them back, good shepherd of the sheep, back to the faith which saints believed of old. Back to the church, which still that faith doth keep. 
Soon may we all one bread, one body be. Through this blessed sacrament of unity. So, Lord, at length, when sacraments shall cease, may we be one with all thy church above, one with thy saints in one unbroken peace, one with thy saints in one unbounded love, more blessed still in peace and love to be, one with the Trinity in unity. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so may we enjoy this banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Ange lingua gloriosi, corporis mysterium, sanguinis que preziosi, quem in mundi preziosum, fructus ventris generosi, rex effudis gentium. Nobis datus, nobis natus, ex intacta virgine, et in mundo conversatus, sparso verdi semine, sui moras incolatus, nero placid mordine. In
as we normally do night prayer at midnight. Uh, we will live stream, live stream night prayer here. If you'd like to join us live stream at midnight at Our Lady of the Holy Spirit's Facebook page, we will do night prayer together. God bless you all and thank you for being with us in prayer. And we leave in silence. <laughs>